Let's add some forms to our Canvas app, right? We're gonna use our forms to edit, view, even create new records inside of our Power App. And this is episode six of our multi-part series on all things comparing model-driven apps to Canvas apps. And so if you've been following along thus far, right, we've built the Dataverse tables, we have built the model-driven app, and we've built about half the Canvas app, so this video is gonna let us continue on that journey to finishing up this Canvas app. So let's just jump over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over here on the desktop, right, we're already in the app, and if we just jump over here to vendors, and so in the last one, we set up the gallery, right? The gallery is all hooked up, it's ready to go. So now we need to add a form. So what we're gonna do is go up here to insert and we're gonna add an edit form. Remember, don't ever use display forms, always edit forms. We'll kind of resize this thing. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna change its data source and we're gonna set its data source to be vendors. Okay, so after a few seconds, it's gonna throw in some columns. It just guesses, it puts whatever columns it wants to do. And so before we do anything else, so I'm gonna go up here to drop down, and I'm gonna say item. And we're gonna change this to be our gallery, right? So this is, and this is gonna be gallery one dot selected. So boom, everything matches. You're seeing buddy's info over here on the right. We're also gonna change the default mode from edit to view. And we're then gonna click on fields and we're gonna add some additional fields. So what fields do we also wanna see? We wanna see contract date, we wanna see the logo, we wanna see the main contact, which is our lookup. I think those are the only ones we need to see. So we'll say add, and after a moment, they're all in there. We might also just change this to be more like a two column view. Looks good. Okay, so now, and if we hold down the alt key so we can click on the other record. Oh, yep, we got region, we got everything. Cool, so we're good. Okay, now what I wanna do is, I wanna shrink this up a little bit, is we wanna be able to work with this data, right? So to do that, we're going to insert a button, and then down here, we're going to just change the text on this button to say edit, and we're gonna say, hey, when you click on this button, we want to do the function edit form, and then the form name. And so if we press that button, that would put our form into edit mode, where we could start to do things like tap to click to add a picture. We click on that, we look on my desktop to find a picture of that adorable buddy. Where is he? Right there, buddy sitting, there we go. And then now what we're going to do is we need to save it. So to save it, what do we want? We gotta have a button for that. So we'll insert a button. We'll pull this one over here and we'll call this button. We'll change the text on it to save. And that's going to do the function submit form, form one. And so now if we say play and say save, that will save off our data, right? See the little dots going across the top. And then once it finishes, boom, we've got buddy. Now, we also need a couple other buttons. Another button we're gonna need here is the um, cancel button. So if we're starting to edit and we don't like what's going on, we'll just say cancel. And so with that particular one, we will do the function view form and then form one. That will put the view back in a view, perfect. And then the last but not least button here we need is a new button. Button new. And then in that one we're going to do new form, form one. And so then now if we press the new button, we could add a new vendor. Or we can cancel. Right now we're seeing back over here, we could click on this one. We could edit this one. We need to add that logo, so we'll do that. We'll click on my logos folder over here, and we'll grab one of those, and we'll say save. Now, when we save our changes, you notice the form staying in edit mode. I don't love that. So one of the properties that we'll take advantage of real quick is if we click on our form, we're gonna say, hey, on success, we want to view form, and then our form name, like so. And so all that's going to do is if we, if we go here to Muddy's Toys and we change his contract date from 2-1 to 2-2, say okay. If we say save now, it will do our same save, but more importantly, it puts the form into view mode. So there you go. We, just like that, have added a form. Not as easy as model-driven apps, but fairly straightforward. Now, obviously, there's a lot more to unpack there about like how to only show the right buttons that you need or to you know make things conditional, make different logic in there. There's a lot more to unpack, but we're gonna save all that. Like that's in my live training class or there's some different YouTube videos out there on it. But for you know core, just one for one, getting this done, that works. With that done, then we would go to products and we're gonna do very similar. Now you're thinking, well, couldn't I just copy all that? 
you can, but it's, you know, it's not a super easy, right? So if we do this here, we'll add another edit form because if you bring over the form, like changing a form to use a different data source really makes forms angry. So don't try to copy the form. But here we'll say use products and then we'll go up here and we'll set the item for this one to be whatever the name of this gallery is, gallery two dot selected. So that should fill those in. Great. We'll change our columns. We'll do a two column again. And then we're going to do the fields. And so what fields do we need? We need our things like um, there's our price. We need a product image. We need our vendor. Add all that. And then we'll just grab vendor, right? We want vendor to be above product image. So we'll click on that. We'll drop it right there, kind of rearrange things. And so there we go. We kind of got our form laid back out. If we click on different ones, we get different things. Perfect. Notice as well, like, you know, with our lookup column, right? We don't have to configure any of that. So Power Apps forms are pretty smart. It automatically knows to use that fancy choices function to get the right vendors. And if we look at terms, we're going to see the same type of thing. It's getting, you know, using choices function to get the right choices from that data set. So we don't have to overthink these things. That stuff all works for us. Now, another thing I will show you though, we'll go back over here. These four buttons, they don't work as is, control C, but they kind of work, control V. If we paste all these in now, if we go in here, all we really have to do is change all these to be from form one to form two. So here's what I'm gonna do, double click, copy. So go here, double click, control V. Oh, I didn't double click, double click, control V. <laughs> go here, double click, control V, double click, and I didn't double click that time. Double click, control V. Pretty quick. Now you're thinking, Shane, I could use like the find and replace. You could, but you need some of the form ones to still be there. You just wouldn't want to do the find and replace on this screen. That would have been a lot more work than what we just did. We also need to go here to our form and make sure that we say, hey, on success, what do we want? We want to reset. And we can just say reset self. Oh, not reset. It's a um, view form. Self. And so self just means any control, it's it, that, that same control. So you don't have to change the name over and over again. So anytime I have a control self-referencing, you always use self. But now we should be good. If we go over to model-driven apps, oh, let's cancel. Oh, we didn't, do did we put our form into view mode? Did we forget to do that? Default mode is view. Come on, Shane, get it together. And so if we go up here to Power Apps 201 Live, and then we edit this, we can then say, hey, we want to add our picture. And so our picture is going to be on my downloads folder. There you go, right there. We added it. Now I want you to notice for a second here that it added and it looks nice and full, right? Watch when we save, right? See the space between, like it's centered, right? If we save, it goes into the zoomed in mode. And over here, it shows this zoomed in mode as well. So what's happening here is that Dataverse just created a thumbnail, a square thumbnail, and it did that by knocking off the edges, right? So in this case, it, it looks terrible, right? So one of the things you can do here is you can go to this item.product image. And so if you do a dot, it's actually got two different things, full and value. Value is the thumbnail. Why well, they didn't call it thumbnail? I don't know. Full is the whole thing. So it's actually using value. You just doesn't show you it's shorthand. So if you change this to dot full, then you get the whole image. Now you have to keep in mind that thumbnails are very tiny, very few little bits that have to fly across the internet. By making it the full, that whole, if that's a five meg image, that whole five meg image is being pulled in. This might not be ideal from a performance standpoint, but if you really just need the right thing to show up there, then that's the case. So I'll leave it to you to debate what to do with this information. I just want to show it to you because it drove me crazy. If we look in our form, right? So there is a image control. And so it is currently using the wrong one, right? So, but it's locked. So you'd have to say advanced, unlock it. And then where it says parent.default, you would have to change this to be, um, what do we change? This item, product image, dot full, and then now you'd get the whole one. Once again, performance, probably not the best idea, but sometimes you just need your pretty picture there no matter what, that's the case. So maybe you put the full one here and then you leave this one at value because this one, right, is gonna load, if there's 100 items here, it's gonna load 100 images. This one's only gonna load the heavy one for the one you've currently got selected. Now, the other thing that I noticed, I think I did wrong here if we edit, notice that price, uh, I put price base here. I did not mean to do that because price base is not editable, price is. So we'd have to do that same, we would just come back over here and I'll just delete that card, quite frankly. And boom, now we're in good shape. 
We can stretch this little puppy, make it bigger. Oh yeah, look at that. Looking nice. And so there you go, folks. We now have forms on our app, right? So different than the model driven, but same functionality at this point. So in the next video, what I want to do is I want to add filter. Remember we showed you how to do those related records. We showed you how to filter or with the vendors to see all the products. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a filter here so we can take products and filter it by vendor and just see the specific vendor ones. Kind of fun. All right. If you want to see that video, check it out, right? Click the link up there above. If the video is not there yet, then it'll be there tomorrow. I promise. And you just need to be a YouTube subscriber so you get notified when those drop. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.